Game two of the Dare DeVries era will occur Friday night in Morgantown against the UMass Minutemen with a familiar face on the sidelines in former Bob Huggins assistant, Frank Martin. And to, to talk about this game and preview this game, I've brought on someone who covers UMass, Mr. Andrew Samaha. Andrew, how you doing? I'm doing good. Glad to be on here. Thank you for inviting me. Absolutely. And uh, did I get your name right? Is it Samaha? Yeah, you got it right. Awesome. Not many people do, but you got it. Awesome, right. awesome. And you can find Andrew on X. Obviously, I have, for those of you watching, I have his X handle on the screen at Andrew underscore Samaha, S-A-M-A-H-A, just like it sounds. And you can find me on Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it, at Coos, C-O-U-Z-206. And obviously, this game will take place Friday night, 7 p.m. Eastern time, and will air on ESPN+. Plus. Game two of the season for both of these teams. And, Andrew, what I noticed, man, both of these teams had similar starts to their season. Both of them won by almost 30 points. Uh, UMass got out to a – went out to like a 14-0 run, I think it was, or maybe more in their game against New Hampshire. West Virginia got out to a 21-0, 21-0 run in their game against uh, Robert Morris Monday night. So, uh, what what can West Virginia fans expect from this UMass team on Friday night? Yeah, so this UMass team – is a lot different than the one they brought in when we faced West Virginia in Springfield last season. Uh, our two top scorers, uh, Matt Cross and Josh Cohen, are not here anymore. So this year, the scoring is going to come from a different, completely different place. Last year, it was the front court. This year, it's the back court. Razul Diggins, who is our, he's our senior leader this year, he scored 26 points against UNH, shot 16 threes. And honestly, that's something that doesn't look like it's – replicable but it's something that you'll probably see something like that again he's going to hoist up a lot of shots with confidence uh they don't really make an emphasis on getting the ball into the paint even though they have a lot of athletic bigs interesting uh now you talked about him shooting 16 threes he made eight of those 16 threes so just because a guy likes to chunk shots fan, west virginia fans do not think that he's going to miss a lot of them because he shot 50 percent, eight of 16 again is that replicable replicable? Probably not, but it's still pretty impressive. And um, so we'll watch out for Rasul Diggins. The matchup I'm looking forward to, Andrew, and I'm not sure how much you were able to watch the West Virginia game, or if you were able to uh, see it at all, but West Virginia, obviously brand new roster, uh, brand new coaching staff. It's they're basically starting from scratch, right? They have one returning player from last year's team, and he is now going to be redshirting for the season. So he won't even play. Uh, his name is Ofri Nave, but West Virginia has a really good guard named Sincere Harris, who's a transfer from Illinois. He's a lockdown defender. So I'll be interested to see, does Coach Darren DeVries put him on Diggins and try to shut him down, or will he put him on point guard, Jalen Curry? And I want you to talk a little bit about Jalen Curry and what he brings to the UMass team, if you don't care. Yeah, Jalen Curry last year, he was uh, all A-10 uh, rookie team. Uh, he – Really took off once conference play started. He had, I think, five of his first conference play games last year were double figures, all coming off the bench. Now this year he's been thrust into the starter role because our point guard from last year entered the portal. He, in the game against UNH on Monday, he put up 12 assists with zero turnovers. And something we all expected from him is that he was a, he was a shot chucker last year. And that was something we were all expecting to see from him coming into this year. But he really spread the ball around a lot. So... I think if, if Coach DeVries looks at the film from the game, I think Sincere Harris would be a better matchup for Diggins considering Curry's looking to spread the ball a lot more this year. He's got a great ball handle, great pass, and UMass is going to set a lot of screens to try and create space for Diggins to shoot mm -hmm. the ball. Yeah. Yeah, the thing about the thing with Harris, he uh, he was giving Robert Morse's point guard such a fit. In like the four or five-minute mark of the game, Robert Morse's coach put in their, another point guard to help run the offense because he was struggling to run the offense because of Sincere Harris's defense. And Sincere Harris, uh, so that'll be an interesting matchup to see where they put him on. And they may move him around a little bit. Who knows? But um, when you talked about UMass not throwing the ball into the paint much, do you think – now, West Virginia is a team who's going to be going to be undermanned as far as size in this game. West Virginia's starting five is Monty Hansberry, who's only six foot eight. They only have one player who's going to play significant minutes who's over 6'8", and that is Eduardo Andre, a backup a backup uh, center forward, whatever you want to call him. And I think he's around 6'10", 6'11". Do you think 
UMass will uh, maybe tweak their game plan a little bit to try to get the ball into the paint on West Virginia maybe and try to take advantage of that of some of their size down low with some of those bigs that they have? Yeah, I, I would be shocked if they didn't put an emphasis on getting the ball in the paint just because that UNH game, it was it's very hard to take a lot of stock into that game because right. UMass took so many threes in that mm -hmm. game, which is not this team's profile. Razul Diggins is a great three-point shooter, but other than that, up and down the roster, nobody else on this team is a great three-point shooter. And Frank Martin went out in the transfer portal this year and got a lot of big guys, a lot of forwards for this team so that he could have an advantage in the paint. Mainly defensively is where he likes to be focused, but a lot of these guys are capable of scoring the ball, guys to look out for. For UMass, uh, if you're a West Virginia fan, number 25, our senior center, uh, Malik Abdel-Goad, he had a double-double against UNH, 12 points and 12 boards. And Daniel Hankins Sanford, who's going to be our starting four, he had 10 points versus UNH. And and honestly, two very athletic bigs to look out for in this game. Awesome. Thank you for that. Yeah, that, that's the one concern West Virginia fans have. I mean, obviously, other than having a whole new team, we're concerned about the lack of size. One of the things Darren DeVries preaches is rebounding, defensive rebounding specifically. Hard to do when you're six tallest guy six eight sometimes. But they're going to have to make up for it in other ways, and and you know he's he's going to stress team rebounding, not just have one or two guys do it. But I'll be interested to watch that matchup to see how Coach Martin, if he tries to take advantage of that of that size difference. Uh, the one thing Amani Hansberry though on the offensive end likes to do is he he can shoot the ball, so he will pull his man out on the perimeter and try to shoot, uh, and 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 then some of the other players will cut, uh, make backdoor cuts, and and try to roll to the rim. They do a lot of pick and roll stuff. So I'll be anxious to see, too, how they match up. Do, do the fours and fives, primarily the fives of, of UMass, how well do they play away from the basket? Yeah, so they played pretty horribly away from the basket against UNH, but that was something Frank talked about, that they've worked on it in practice and they just didn't come out and perform the way that he was hoping. The uh, You brought up the point about the back doors, that West Virginia likes to go back door a lot. Mm -hmm. UMass got beat on the back door several times versus UNH. And, and they're okay with that because the way they play, UMass is a very long team, long arms, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of tall guys. They like to try and jump out into the passing lanes, get the steals. They got a lot of points in transition versus UNH. And it led to just a lot of backdoor cuts on them. So if that's something West Virginia is going to play to, it it's something that they're going to get a lot of points going to the back door on. Mm -hmm. But they, they're bigs. Primarily, Daniel Hank and Sanford will be somebody who's going to be good away from the rim, but Shahid Muhammad and Malik abdel Goad are two guys that they're good rim protectors and they won't be leaving the paint much. Gotcha. Okay. That's interesting. Um, so we all kind of know Frank, West Virginia fans, you know, you know we, we watched Bob Huggins for years. We know Frank Martin is a similar style coach to Huggins. He's going to be super aggressive, uh, you know, relies – uses his defense to produce offense. You know, that's that's where they're going to get most of their scoring, right, is from transition baskets like you mentioned. Well, can West Virginia fans expect UMass to do a lot of full-court pressing, or is it mainly just half-court uh, half court defense? It's been, It was a lot in the half-court. Uh, I think towards the end of the game, Frank decided to show a little bit of press just to see how it would go. It was by no means any press Virginia-type press. It was just right. – man on man just trying to just just making them run the full length of the floor on you and it's not something we've seen at all in frank martin's time here so it's gonna be a lot of half court defense and a lot of half court man to man at that not a lot of zone coming right uh, and i'm here with uh obviously you guys are here on hoops from the hills part of the kuzis corner sports network i'm here with andrew samaha with wmua the student radio station at umass um thanks again to andrew for joining us andrew can you talk a little bit about uh, Akil Watson, the forward, the transfer from Arizona State. Yeah, Akil Watson, he was a, uh, a four-star prospect coming out of high school. Went to Arizona State, like you mentioned. Uh, didn't get to see a lot of minutes there. And Frank Martin made sure to go out and recruit this guy. I mean, six foot nine, only 185, but very lengthy guy. Uh, versus UNH, he had four steals in that game. He just continuously kept jumping into the passing lanes, 14 points mm -hmm. in 14 minutes. Extremely yep. athletic, has the capability to shoot the ball from beyond the arc, but the the defense, aside from being able to jump in the passing lanes, as was a question mark for him. Uh, attacking him, going at the rim, is something West Virginia should look to do. Okay, interesting. Uh, 
So he they they have a kind of high risk high reward type defense where they want to jump passing lanes, and and on you know the risk of that obviously is giving up like you mentioned earlier the backdoor cuts. So uh, that's interesting. Now, can you just talk a little bit about the expectations for this UMass team? Are there high expectations for this team? Are they expected to compete for an Atlantic 10 title? You know, what, what's realistic for, for this season? Yeah, so this is Frank Martin's third year now at the helm. Uh, his first year didn't go as planned. Uh, I think it was like a 15, 14 win season, something like that. And then they came back, bounced back, got 20 wins, got fourth place in the Atlantic 10, and then three of their top four scores into the portal. Mm. So coming into this year, Frank did a good job rebuilding this roster. Uh, I think they're projected to finish eighth in the Atlantic 10, wow. which I do think is unfair. I, I think this team will outperform the expectations set for them. Um, they will have games where they're going to struggle offensively because it's just the profile of this team. They really have only two real scores and Curry and Diggins on the roster. The rest is is there for defense and hustle is what it is what it seems yeah. like early on. But they're a team that they will outperform their expectation, but as of right now, I think aiming for 20 wins again is where Frank Martin wants to be. Boy, that sounds like a Bob Huggins team. Doesn't have a lot of scores. They win with defense and hustle. That's what we we were used to for most of Bob Huggins' tenure. Uh, and, and it's fun to watch when it works. But, man, when it don't, it can lead to some ugly basketball. Um, and, obviously, Frank Martin, I mean, he's the guy's been to a Final Four. He's He's been to some deep runs in the NCAA tournament with Kansas State. Obviously, the Final Four was with South Carolina when he was with them. So, He's a really good basketball coach. Is uh, you know, I'm assuming the fan base is still on board with Frank Martin at this point. Yeah, the his first year was was pretty brutal. He was uh getting in some fights on Twitter with fans and uh, <laughs> a lot of bickering going back and forth. But now, yeah, he he loves it here. The fans are are starting to come around on him. Uh, he's been preaching a lot, trying to get more students to the game. The fan base, mm-hmm. the crowds aren't quite there yet. But as the season goes on, and we saw it last year as the season went on and the team kept winning more and more games, the fans kept coming. So, I mean, that's hopefully something we're going to see this year. And I think going going down to West Virginia, I mean, I'm not going to – I don't know how this game's going to end, but say it does end in a West Virginia win – or sorry, excuse me, say it does end in a UMass win, mm-hmm. I think that's the momentum shift that Frank Martin would be looking for from this fan base to start filling yeah. out our arena. Yeah. And, and, you know, obviously, Frank, he, I've always had a lot of respect for him, the way he coaches and the way, you know, he's always been very outspoken. He, he doesn't afraid to speak his mind. I've noticed that as well in press conferences and whatnot. But uh, has there been any Bob Huggins sightings at UMass practices? Because I know there was some talk there last offseason that Huggs may go visit Frank at practice and talk to his guys and, and those types of things. Has, in, has that occurred to your knowledge? Uh, to my knowledge, no. That's something I feel like definitely would have gotten out there uh we saw him in uh in springfield last year for the the umass west virginia matchup that was pretty cool right. he yep. was uh he had fans lining up taking pictures with him which was pretty cool yeah. but uh, other than that no no bob no yeah. bob sightings gotcha yeah uh huggins is still a legend in west virginia look the way he left was not pretty um left a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths but you know time heals wounds and we'll always love the guy most of us will anyway and for what he did for the program and what he's done for the state of West Virginia as a whole, and especially what he's done for cancer patients and cancer research and all the money he's raised for that. I mean, the guy, to me, the good he's done um, is what people need to remember him by, and not how he left. And I think we will. Uh, it's just going to take a little bit of time. But uh, I think, you know, Huggins, I'm sure he'll probably get to a UMass game at some point or at least a practice. And I, I, matter of fact, I'd say he'll be there. Uh, he's been attending most of the games. I'd say he'll be in the house Friday night, to be honest with you. So don't be surprised if you see him, see him there, Andrew. Yeah, I honestly, I hope to see him there. Not sure uh, I'd be able to have any kind of interaction with him, but right. Bob Huggins. I mean, I grew up a, a West Virginia fan my whole life, watching Bob Huggins. Right. And the the Press Virginia days, that 2010 season, is still one of my earliest memories. Is like a six year old just watching that team play with. Uh, with Deshaun and, and everybody. Yeah. So that's great cool. memories yeah. growing yeah, up as a uh, Virginia fan. Yeah. I, yeah. Tell, talk a little bit more about that. I'll, obviously the West Virginia helmet in the background, let the audience know a little bit about your background there. Yeah. So I was born in, in West Virginia back in 04, but we left, uh, unfortunately moved up to Massachusetts in, in 07, but I'm the youngest of four kids. And, uh, my family was there for about eight years. 
So they got out to to Milan Pushkar and, and to the Coliseum to watch quite a few games, became fans of West Virginia. So by natural upbringing, I was also a West Virginia fan. And I remember the two, I just remember specifically the 2010 season was the first year I started watching basketball because my brother would always pull me onto the couch and he'd be like, you have to see this. Like mm. West Virginia is actually good at basketball. And from then on, I just, every single year was so dialed into the team with basketball, whether it was yeah. football. Tavon Austin was one of my, oh, my idols growing up playing mm-hmm. football. He's one of my favorite players of all time. So yeah, the, the connection's definitely there. Awesome. Well, you, you did not have to live through the 2007 pit game, thankfully. <laughs> Well, I mean, you were alive, but you were too little to remember it. So, I've heard a lot about so, it. So count your blessings on that front. <laughs> However, um, you you probably don't remember that era of West Virginia football with Pat White, Steve Slayton, those guys. I'm sure you've seen highlights. Mm-hmm. But uh, those are sort of, those are basically the glory days of West Virginia football. That's what we long to get back to. But anyways, I don't want to – this is a basketball show. I don't want to loom too long on that subject. But uh, anyway, I just thought it would be really cool for you to introduce yourself to the fans and but you, you know, you are a, you know, native West Virginian. He, he's born in the state of West Virginia, so he'll always be a mountaineer in our books. But he's also a Minuteman, so we've got to got to respect that. And he's doing a great job covering UMass over there, doing some play by play work, I think, or some color analyst work anyway. Oh yeah, over there at WMUA. Uh, what year are you in at UMass, Andrew? I'm a junior now, third year. Awesome, going strong. Awesome man, congrats on that, and. uh Thank you. I appreciate you coming on. Do you have anything else you want to share about this UMass team that West Virginia fans need to be looking out for on Friday night? Someone to look out for that I think deserves to be just to be talked about a little bit. Uh, if you look at the game from UNH, you won't look at him and, and circle him, but I'm sure maybe you guys remember a little bit of, of Jaden Jenge, what he brought uh, when we played you guys last year. Uh, he only played 10 minutes off the bench versus UNH. Not sure what's been going on with, with him, This what happened this offseason or something. He's one of our few returners, and we played Providence in an exhibition game. Uh, he didn't start, even though he started all 31 games last year. And he came off the bench and only played 10 minutes this year. But he's somebody that he's going to make an impact in this game. He's 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 six foot four, but he plays the exact same way Gabe Osaboyan used to. Mm-hmm. Uh, just incredibly gritty on the defensive side of the floor and will will be an absolute pest but it comes with him being a little bit uglier on the offensive side of the floor i got you okay thanks for that yeah i, I had forgotten about him from last year last year's i'll be honest with you last year's basketball season is <laughs> i've, I've kind of let it vanish for for a lot of reasons oh, yeah. but uh one thing i didn't want to touch on that i almost forgot very physical style of basketball that, that umass plays under frank martin and as a way, and I don't know if this is a question or more of a more of an observation, and maybe I can get your comment on. But West Virginia played Robert Morris, who doesn't come anywhere near that level of physicality. They had an exhibition game against uh, a Division II school, and then they had a secret scrimmage against Wake Forest, where that they supposedly won. And I don't know how physical Wake Forest is, but I'll be interested to see how West Virginia, this new West Virginia roster, who we're still learning and trying to figure out how well they handle a team as physical as UMass. I'm a little bit nervous about this game uh, because I do think UMass has the ability to win this game because of their physicality and their style of play. Uh, What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, UMass is a very physical team. I mean, it's just something that comes with the Frank Martin brand. His big guys in low are going to be very physical on the offensive and defensive side of the glass. Mm -hmm. Uh, They're going to go for a lot of shot blocks in this game. We have – we brought in – Daniel Foster and Shahid Muhammad, who Shahid Muhammad played Juco last year, but averaged three and a half blocks a game. And mm-hmm. Daniel Rivera last year at Bryant. Um, I forget that. I think he had over 80 blocks last year at Bryant. So they're wow. a team that they're going to, they're going to jump a lot. Uh, they might fall for a lot of shot fakes, but they're going to get a lot of blocks and mm-hmm. they're going to be very active on the offensive glass. Yeah, and that makes me nervous. The offensive glass piece makes me nervous because, like I mentioned, West Virginia lacks size, and they did not rebound the ball well against against uh, Robert Morris. And Robert Morris didn't have a guy of over six eight, so that's something they're going to have to clean up. Uh, West Virginia, in order to overcome that, in my opinion, has to they have to be efficient on offense, which means they can't turn the ball over. They have to force turnovers on defense to get some extra possessions. Because if uh, because if you're not going to get extra possessions on the offensive glass, you have to do it in, in other ways. So that's going to be an interesting uh, battle there on the boards to see 
I'm going to assume UMass is probably going to out rebound West Virginia, but by how much and how much will it hurt West Virginia? And is there other other ways they can, uh, you know, they can offset it so it doesn't hurt them yeah. too bad? It's going to be an interesting, interesting stat to, to look for. Yeah, UMass, as good as they are on the offensive mm-hmm. side of the glass against New Hampshire, they looked pretty ugly on the defensive glass. But it was it was more so a lot of miscommunication and mm-hmm. and ball watching going on. I'm not sure if that's something that's just like a, a first game of the season type thing, still feeling out the team and your teammates and stuff like that. But I wouldn't be surprised if versus West Virginia, there's a lot of situations where two guys go for the rebound. This was something that happened like four times in our game, by the way. Like two guys would go for the rebound at the same time, and mm-hmm. neither one of them would come away with it because they're fighting for it at the same time. Yeah. Happened way more times yeah. than, than we should be proud of. And a lot of... T- a lot of offensive rebounds fell to UNH just because of a lot of ball watching. I wouldn't be surprised if West Virginia is able to capitalize on that with all their yeah, athleticism. I would probably chalk that up as first game jitters, first game, you know, working the kinks out, those types of things. But who knows? We'll see. Uh, I do know that, you know, UMass likes to force a lot of turnovers. So does West Virginia. There are some similarities in these teams. They both like to play really good uh, defense in the half court. They both like to get out in transition. Uh, a little bit the, the stylistically they're different, obviously, but but you know some of their some of their keys are the same. Some of the things they like to focus on are the same. So it'll be interesting to see how they match up, and I'm looking forward to it. It's, I think it'll be a fun game to watch. I think it, I think it has a, has a t- uh, chance to be a really really tight game. Yeah, I mean, last year tight game. Granted, West Virginia last year, all the uh, all the things they were going through, UMass in that game. They got some hero ball out of Robert Davis. I'm sure you guys remember that, the eight threes. Yes. I think it was eight threes that he made in that game. He was a good three-point shooter. I know, I remember seeing a lot of, of on West Virginia Twitter that uh, that this guy who shot like 25% from three just happens to hit eight against West Virginia. Yeah, that, he that, was happened, a, to, that happens to West Virginia a lot. <laughs> he was a very high-profile shooter coming out of, out of high school, if that makes you guys feel uh, okay, any yeah. better. So that was a game that he just – the environment got to when he played well. But – uh. I mean, I'm, I imagine the spread's going to be close for this game. The game will probably be closely contested, and I'm curious to see uh, the impact that Tucker has on this game because mm-hmm. yeah. I'm not sure UMass has a guy that can that can bother Tucker at all. Yeah, Tucker can pretty much score. Almost, I, I don't want to say at will, but he can almost score at will. I mean, he he's a very unselfish player, though. I mean, Tucker could probably score 30 a game if he wanted to, but that's not necessarily what would help the team, right? So I think now he's up to the P4 level. If he can average anywhere between 15 and 20, I don't think he'll get 20 a game at, 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 in the Big 12. But if he can get 14, 15, 16 a game, and some of his teammates, you know, uh, have a couple of teammates that average in double digits too, I think this team has a chance to win a lot of basketball games, a lot more than, you know, the preseason expectations, which is 13th in the conference, which I think they're going to be better than that. I'm not predicting them to go out here and compete for the league championship in year one. But I do think they're going to knock off some teams that they're not supposed to, and I think they'll be competitive and, and maybe, maybe have a, have a chance to get into the NCAA tournament by the end of the year. Yeah, it's a great chance to try and b- bounce back. I mean, it, it's really only up from from last year. I uh, I unfortunately didn't get a chance to watch the Robert Morris game because I was I was calling the uh, the UMass game. Makes sense. But uh, but I mean, based on like the highlights I've seen, the electric start with with Tucker and, and mm-hmm. Javon Small. Javon Small, another guy. I'm yeah. not sure what UMass can do with him. Jalen Curry's not much of a – he he can poke in and, and get a few steals, but if he takes a few gambles, Javon Small's going to blow mm-hmm. right by him. So, I yeah. mean, Javon and Tucker are going to give UMass real problems. And Javon Small is really good. He, he's really good at uh, – he's really – he's he, he can score. He can he can dish it. He can take it to the rim. He, he's good at step – he has a really good step back. I love his step back jumper. He, he he's good at uh, he has a really quick step and and he can juke you and just make a quick step back and he's wide open man he, he can break your ankles on that step back so I love I love watching him do that and then uh, obviously Tucker you talked about him and then another guy to watch for any UMass fans that may be watching this Toby Okani Toby Okani is a transfer that came in um, from I think Ill- University of Illinois Chicago or something I think's the name of the school anyway you yeah UIC and he, he's not a great shooter, but he just finds ways to score. You know, he, he's good at taking the ball to the rim. He's good in the mid-range game. Uh, he's, he's another player for UMass fans to look out for. And I think he's going to be a huge, huge piece to this West Virginia team this year. Uh, and then, obviously, I, I mentioned Amani Hansberry. He's a 6'8 
he's really a stretch four, honestly, but he's playing the five this year out of necessity. He can shoot the three or he can score it underneath. And then obviously Sincere Harris is a lockdown defender on the perimeter that uh, can score it a little bit, but that's really not his main thing. His main thing is to be a, uh, a defender and get steals and disrupt passing lanes and, and put pressure on, on the ball. So that's, that's kind of West Virginia's starting five. And then they, you know, obviously their bench, they have a pretty deep bench, especially at the guard spot. They're not, uh, don't have a whole lot of depth in on the in the front court, uh, I, but they do have quite a bit of depth. I think I think they're kind of the opposite of UMass in that regard, but they do have quite a bit of guard depth. Uh, two good freshmen, Jonathan Powell and KJ Tenner, uh, both pretty good too. So yeah, I'm I'm really excited about this team this year, and I uh, can't wait for Friday night. Yeah, UMass. They are exactly the opposite of West Virginia. Uh, no depth in the the back court really, but a lot of depth in the front court. Mm-hmm. Jalen Curry and Razul Diggins are going to be uh, forced to play a lot of minutes in this game, and it's going to be a situation where one of them is going to get checked out probably three minutes into the game, just yeah. so that one of them can keep subbing back in for each other, right. uh, over and over. Their their backups, Marquis Worthy and and Nate Garangamba. One of them is a freshman, uh, doesn't have a lot of time under his belt, obviously, and the other one's a sophomore who last year as a freshman really struggled. So. Uh, depth in the in the backcourt is definitely a huge concern for UMass this season. Interesting. Well, Andrew, one more time, let everybody know where they can find you on social media, where they can find your work at, and uh, and and you know, just wherever everywhere you are on 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 social media and online. Yeah, I'm on Twitter uh, at Andrew underscore Samaha. Pretty simple. And then yeah, ninety one point one WMUA FM online. There's our website, WMA.org, you ever want to listen live, you just click one button. Just because it's a radio station doesn't mean you need to be in your car on the radio listening to it. So There you go. And and by the way, they have a YouTube channel. I was actually listening to Andrew's call of the game last week or earlier in the week. I was actually listening to it on YouTube. So they do have a YouTube channel, at w, the WMUA YouTube channel. So uh, uh, very interesting. I was able to learn a little bit about the team just by listening to a few minutes of, the, of your broadcast. So kudos to you and your partner on uh, doing a great job with that. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Well, listen, everybody, thank you for tuning into this episode of Hoops from the Hills. Thanks to Andrew for joining us. Hopefully you learned a little bit about UMass. And if you're a UMass fan, maybe you learned a little bit about West Virginia too. Uh, look forward to the game Friday night. Again, it's at 7 p.m. Eastern tip-off on ESPN+. Plus. The game will take place inside the WVU Coliseum in Morgantown, West Virginia. Hope you all have a great day or a great night whenever you're watching this. Let's go, Mountaineers. We're done.